Today, HSBC Chairman Douglas Flint dropped a bombshell. He said the bank is considering whether to move its UK headquarters to somewhere else. With me is Richard Stoven Bradford to discuss what it all means. So, why do you do this? Uh, it's not the first time, Brooke, we've had this, this stunt before in 2006. But one of the reasons he's doing this is I think he and the bank as a whole are up to here with regulation, fines, the idea of ring fencing in the UK, and then there's the bank levy. And we're on the eve of a UK general election in two weeks' time. So the timing is pretty spooky, don't you think? Certainly has the air of HSBC trying to intervene. Um, and they do have form, as we know. In 2010, when they were trying to decide whether to split up universal banks, uh, Stuart Gulliver, who's now the CEO, mused aloud that this would have an impact on HSBC's choice of domicile. And intriguingly, the UK did water down its proposals to ring fence uh, retail banking rather than completely split banks. And what do you know, HSBC is still British. So are there good reasons for them to move domicile? There are. I mean, half of its assets are based here in the UK, 49%. But a third of its assets are in Asia, but 78% of its profits are generated in Asia and a very small fraction in, in what it calls Europe, which includes the UK. So that is its spiritual homeland. That is where its, its future, I would say, lies. Because if, if you look at the world as emerging and mature markets, then its future's not in the UK and in mature Western markets. It's got to be in the growth markets of Asia. So there's good reason for that. There's another reason too, which is that maybe regulation is not quite as uh, strong as it is in the UK or quite as tough as it is. But I, I, I think that's a secondary reason. And actually on the regulation front, I would think for, for HSBC, because it does have substantial presences in Europe and in the US, having a home regulator who's seen as tough by the rest of the world, which is what the UK is now, in some ways is an advantage because Absolutely. it does provide protection. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, you can see this whether you're looking at Standard Chartered, which has a big Asian business, or the Prudential, the UK insurer, which has a big Asian focus. I think it's much more attractive if you're a host regulator in Singapore or, or Thailand if you can put some reliance on the UK regulator. Now, to be, to be clear, UK regulators didn't equip themselves brilliantly with light touch regulation in the past, but in a sense, it's gonna be much easier if you're relying somewhat on a home regulator that has a reputation now to preserve. And I, I would argue that if you sub substitute that for, for example, a Chinese regulator, I think anyone in Asia would say, well, who would we rather have as our, as our lead regulator? So if it's a finely balanced question, you know, why bring it up now? I think election timing's one thing. It, it's always good to rattle cages around this time. There's also the whole European Union membership thing, which is another cage rattle that's going on. But I think much more importantly, there's a, there's a, a general thrust too that they've got to get, get over, which is that, that most of their shareholders are in, in the West, 40% in the US, 30% in the UK. So I think that they're hoping that there's going to be a bit of a some kind of, of, of shareholder push or something to try and lighten the load yet again. They've got off lightly in the past. Maybe it can happen again. So do we think this is going to affect the UK election? I think it's going to make no difference at all to the UK election. Every party's probably got a plan up its sleeve for a banking levy. And they're doing it because they can. They know that the banks are a soft touch. And I think in, in the bottom of their thinking, they reckon that HSBC isn't going anywhere fast. Thanks so much, Richard. So there you have it. HSBC rattles the cages. Let's see whether they're really going to go.